Hi, good morning, my dear students. I'm Daphne Kong. Welcome to my discussions. Today we will continue to discuss about the topic of thermal chemistry. Some of the students are struggling with this topic. This is because they are lazy to understand and remember the key definitions of each of the standard enthalpy change of reactions. As you recall, we already studied about the standard enthalpy change of formations. Therefore, our discussion today will be focused on the standard enthalpy change of atomizations of atom, the standard enthalpy change of atomizations of compound, and bond energy. Now, let's look at the first part, the definitions of the standard enthalpy change of atomizations of atoms. My dear students, as can be seen from the name, atomization means converting a compound into its individual atoms. Therefore, the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction can be deduced from considerations of the energy required to break bonds in the reactants and the energy release when the bonds in the products are formed. Therefore, the energy required to separate all the bonds in an element or a compound is known as atomization enthalpy. It is defined slightly different for element and compound. So, our discussions today will be focused on standard enthalpy of atomizations of an element, standard enthalpy atomizations of a compound, and bond enthalpy. At first, let's look at the difference between standard enthalpy of atomizations of an element and bond enthalpy. Always bear in mind that we can call bond enthalpy as bond energy or standard bond dissociations energy. Now, let's see what is the definition for the standard enthalpy of atomizations of an element. It is defined as the heat energy absorbed when one mole of gaseous atoms is formed from its element under standard conditions. During the process of atomization, all types of chemical bonds are broken down and none are formed. Therefore, the enthalpy of atomization is always a positive value. For example, the standard enthalpy change of atomization of sodium is the energy required to form one mole of sodium in gases form from sodium in the state of solid. Next, bond enthalpy is the amount of energy absorbed to break one mole of gases covalent bonds AB into gases atoms A and B. Bond energy is always positive because bond dissociations always involve absorptions of heat and the process is endothermic. Always bear in mind that the higher the bond energy or the bond enthalpy, the stronger is the covalence bond. And here are some examples. As a conclusion, the key difference between enthalpy of atomizations and bond enthalpy is that Enthalpy of atomizations describe the energy required to separate a molecule into its atoms, while the bond enthalpy describes the dissociations of chemical bonds in a molecule. In other words, it is the measure of the strength of a chemical bond. I put them in more simple way like this. 
always bear in mind that if we're talking about bone and taupe, it is referred to one more of Raiden's break. If talking about the standard enthalpy of atomizations of an element, it is referred to one more of product is form. For the diatomic molecule, bond energy is a double of the standard enthalpy of atomizations. All enthalpy changes of atomizations of the Nobel gases or group 8 elements such as helium and argon are zero. This is because the elements are already in the form of separate gases atom under standard conditions. Now, let's compare the definitions of these two standard enthalpy of atomizations which involve element or compounds for elements it is defined as the heat absorbed when one more of gases atoms are formed from its element under standard conditions if referred to the compound it is the heat absorbed when one more of compound is converted into gases atom under standard conditions next let's discuss about the question which involve the standard and the of atomizations of an element and of a compound it is uh, the passive questions of the stpm syllabus from questions a3 by using his law and data below determine uh, the enthalpy of atomizations for silicon data correct so the first step of answering this question is to write down the thermochemical equations involved now let's see how are we going to use the definitions that we remember to write down the thermochemical equations to write down the thermochemical equations we need to refer to the definitions of the enthalpy change of reactions so we look at the first one this is enthalpy of atomizations of silicon according to the definitions means one mole of gases atoms is formed so it is the definitions for enthalpy of atomizations of an element according to the definitions one mole of silicon is formed one mole of gases silicon is formed from its element so it is in solid state so this is the first definition next enthalpy of atomizations of chlorine according to the definitions one mole of chlorine it is in gases form is formed from its element after that try to balance up the thermochemical equations so we need one mole of product is from this is one this should be one that's why we have to put one over two here next we're talking about enthalpy of formation so according to the definitions it is heat release when one mole of the compound is formed from its element. So to write down the thermochemical equations, we need to write down silicon tetrachloride. It is in liquid form. So one mole of silicon tetrachloride is formed from its element. So it element should be silicon in solid form right with chlorine gas after that try to balance up the thermochemical equations always remember the definitions for formation is 
one mole of the product is from that's why we need to put two over here to balance up the equations next we need to understand that the question asks us to determine the enthalpy of atomizations of a compound which is silicon tetrachloride according to the definitions it is the enthalpy change when one mole of compound is converted into gases atom so now let's write down the thermochemical equations in Wolf. so one mole of silicon tetrachloride is converted into its gases atom so this is in gas form and chlorine in gas form after this we will balance up the equations there are four chlorine here so we have to put four over here so these are the thermochemical equations that we write from the definition just now to determine the enthalpy change of atomizations of silicon tetrachloride we need to use the energy cycle so the first step is we need to write down the thermochemical equations of the formations like this by referring to the thermochemical equations here we can write like this from silicon in solid state turn to silicon in gaseous state it need 368.2 kilojoule per mole so we will write like this from silicon in solid state go to silicon in gaseous state so the energy needed is positive 368.2 next chlorine gases form in chlorine atom in gases form according to the definitions here if half of the chlorine gas we need 1 to 1.7 kilojoule per mole of energy now we need two mole over here that's why we need to time 4 to the value of the enthalpy change after this from the questions we need to determine the enthalpy change of atomizations of silicon tetrachloride so we need to draw the arrow like this from here to here this is the atomizations energy for silicon tetrachloride. Lastly, by using the Hayes law concept, this is the directions of anticlockwise from here to here, from here to here, anticlockwise is equal to the directions of clockwise. This is the directions of clockwise. That's why negative 640.4 add up with the enthalpy change of atomizations. Lastly, the enthalpy of atomizations of silicon tetrachloride is positive 1495.4 kilojoule per mole. That's all for our discussions today.